This is Narrator Neville speaking to you from the floor of the studio where Auntie Jack and her two companions are about to arrive. There is a ripple of excitement and anticipation running through the veins of the massed multitudes of... By Jove, mass multitudes, that's good, isn't it? Mass multitudes, very poetic, poetic indeed. Yes, and here she is now! And she has just declared that she is quite elderly. Tonight! How oh, tonight? <laughs> tonight! Tonight! <laughs> tonight! Uh, no, Auntie Jack, it says here that you only say tonight once. Shut up! Uh, yes, Auntie Jack. <laughs> Auntie Jack is looking rather tense at the moment. She's uh, coming over towards me now and she's about to say... Shut up, Neville. Shut up, Neil! Uh, no, Neville's the name. Neil! Uh, yes, Auntie Jack, whatever you say, shut up, Neil. <laughs> Anyone ever tell you you're a feminine fairy? Oh, naughty Auntie Jack. Now I'm afraid I'll have to turn you into a frog. Try it. <laughs> Rack off, fairy. <laughs> Do you always mix with fairies, Neville? Auntie Jack is uh, looking rather tense again. She's uh, standing right beside me now as she uh, raises her large gloved fist and she... Say it, Neville! It's written there! Say it! Uh, she punches me to the floor. Oh. Tonight we are going to attempt to analyze the earlier works of Futon, Flint Grindley and Stick, four great essayists of the 10s and 20s. <laughs> also, four great boxers of the 10s and 20s. Look, Neville, whose show is this? Yours, Auntie Jack. Yeah, well, get off or I'll rip your arms off. <laughs> So you want your culture, whatever it is, dancing. Not your airy-fairy ballroom garbage, but your E-man sport. Not for the weak need, the soppy or the pansy, but the sport of queens and kings. Here it is, cross-country marathon dancing. <laughs> We're in the practice enclosure before the start of this year's Canadian three-step cross-country marathon dance 500 classic and we've just got time to speak to the favourites for the event, the 1934 champions Edith and Clive Grindley. Edith, do you feel confident? Oh yeah, Neville. I'm fighting fit. Clive reckons we're fitting now and we were in 1934 when we set the course record. Clive, do you feel the impediment in the lower part of your body will prejudice your chances? Not at all, Neville. Well, best of luck to you. <laughs> Contestants are at the barrier. The starter has his finger on the button, ready to send them on their journey. And they're racing. <laughs> and a good start, too. Zambia bounded clear into the lead, and it's a neck and neck struggle with Peru down to the first furlong. And believe me, brother, it's London to a brick on that these new Australians are going to be the ones to watch. Hello, there's a nasty fall. Back to that. <laughs> Australia's looking for a rails run and have definitely commandeered the box seat in this race. Although the rank outside of Uruguay has gone for the win at a very early stage. At 
the head of the others now. It's the USSR out one on the turn. Parked in behind them, it's Uganda. And as they go down to greet the judge for the first time, it's London to a brick on that Indonesia is going to be a hard one to beat. Wow, well, look at them go. And now out of the blue, it's Liechtenstein. Believe me, brother, this is going to be a hot one. Into the straight six now, it's Chile, Uganda, Nicaragua and uh, Greenland. And hello, the USA <laughs> literally slicing through the field with a superb scissors movement. <laughs> And after that short burst, the stain is beginning to show. <laughs> it's a hard race for these three, literally being ridden into the ground. There's one for the books. The Vice Squad seems to be taking an unusually keen interest in the representatives from Latin America. <laughs> Only four miles of the race, Australia seems to be out of it. Good luck, Uganda. Queensland School of Acting and Gesture presents the Royal Shakespeare Cassette School of Acting. Sweet Gertrude, leave us too, for we have closely sent for Hamlet hither. That he asked were by accident, may hear a front of failure. Her father and myself. Lawful espials will so bestow ourselves that seeing unseen, we may of their encounter I shall frankly obey. judge. And for your part, Ophelia, I do wish that your good beauties be the cause of Hamlet's happy wildness. A horse! A horse! I think them for a horse! <laughs> Ophelia, walk you here. Gracious, so please you. withdraw, my lord. Bloody Shakespeare, the actor's curse. Oh, by the way, if there are any old aunties out there who reckon they can go the knuckle for 12 rounds, come in and try it. Pro analyzes Kevin Kevin R. Artist, innovator, creator, genius in his own time. my creative meat studios. Now I reckon butchery is definitely an art, with a tradition and history as long as a slaughterhouse. Come in and see my exhibits. Butcher's joke. <laughs> 
Now, you may wonder why I'm wearing this peace sign in sausages around my neck. Pretty far out, I know. Some people might even say crazysville. But just another example of creative me jewelry. My elbow on that string of sausages weighs approximately 11 and a half pounds. A butcher's joke. But my more recent publication, Butchery Made More Beautiful in uh, three volumes, I've attempted to um, <coughs> uncover the more artistic aspects of butchery. Now, take the case of a window display. Now, you may very well turn aside and you um, uh, or mockingly say, ho, ho, what about it? But to the untrained eye, uh, there is a wealth of art lying beneath his powers of vision. <laughs> Regarded as a bit of a rebel in the trade. Some could say even real far out, or even a bit of a beatnik. My style is more your early contemporary post-impressionistic style, like your Shackles, your Renneries, your Salvador Alis, and your Bacons, all great painters of meat who have inspired me to these great heights. Now, for example, I take an everyday common or garden chop, and I say to the chop, I say, chop. What else are you trying to say to me, other than meat wisely speaking? And I heard that chop saying, I am the shape of South America, land of the Pampas and Latin American rhythms. Here is an example of a film clip showing the creative process I went through to achieve the uh, South American mood desired. First, I took a large SAC or South American looking chop and suspended it with invisible wires from the roof. I then filled the window with dense tropical vegetation and jungle parakeet, pigs and tripes of various hues and toning. The whole scene was looking crazy filled. Some might say even be bopalula. And when I say that window was high after 15 days and 28 tonnes of birdseed, I don't mean high in terms of elevatedly off the ground or even drug addictively speaking. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Finally, my work of art was complete. <laughs> you cook a lamb to chop, you cook a pork to chop, cook a butter up a tree, you cook a cut, you cook a meat pie, more fresh meat for you and me, you cook a cow, hook, you cook a pig's foot, bacon burger up a tree. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil men do lives after them. I am you in this sketch. Uh, no, Aunt Jane. Well, get off or I'll shove your hose up your doublet. <laughs> Hello. 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 Do you mind if I sit down? Oh, no, by all means, sit down. <laughs> do you know that gorilla sitting next to you? Yes, I do. He's a very close personal friend of mine. Well, as he is, I was wondering if you could possibly introduce me to him. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't possibly do that. Why not? Because I haven't been introduced to you yet. You see, gorillas are very formal about introductions. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, my name's Errol, Errol B. Dan. Uh -huh. People say I'm a lonely man. Uh -huh. I think it'd be so neat if I could meet that gorilla sitting down on your seat. Down on the seat. Down on the sea, down on the sea, because I am named Zero, Hero be dead. Oh, people say I'm a lonely man. So I've noticed. <laughs> that gorilla wouldn't be your brother, would he? Looks enough like you. 
<laughs> oh, no. Look, I'm terribly sorry, but the rules state that to be introduced, you need a third or neutral person to introduce you. Well, why can't the gorilla introduce us? Because he hasn't met you yet. Well, what are we going to do? I'm afraid we'll just have to remain very distant acquaintances, that's all. <laughs> but look, it's very important for me to meet that gorilla. I feel almost destined to meet that gorilla. Well, there's just one thing that we can possibly do. Really? The gorilla knows a lady that he formerly knew. And there she is, sitting on that seat. But I don't know her. Yes, but as I said, my gorilla knows her. Now, if I ask him to introduce us, that little old lady, then she can introduce ourselves to each other, and then I can introduce you to my gorilla. Why don't we go over, then? Yes. Oh, um, zap, zip, zip, zap, zap, little old lady who was a friend of my gorilla. Oh, hello. We were wondering if you could introduce us through this gorilla friend of my friend here. Oh, hello, gorilla. <laughs> uh, well, Neil, I would like you to meet Errol and Errol Neil. G'day, Neil. How do you do, Errol? Thank you very much, little old lady, little old lady, little old lady. Well, as we've been introduced introduction-wise, Neil. <laughs> yes, Errol. <laughs> I'm wondering if you could introduce me to your gorilla friend, Neil. <laughs> yes, Errol. Well, it's already gorilla introduction-wise. Take it away, Neil. <laughs> yes. Well, Errol, I would like you very much to meet my gorilla companion and friend. Oh. Errol, this is... <laughs> Look, I know his face, but the name escapes me. <laughs> Introductions are so fine. They said gorillas did them all the time. I used to be a lonely man, but I know your name's Neil. And your name's Errol P. Dan. Your name is Neil. Errol P. Dan. Your name is Neil. I'm Errol P. Dan. I think your name is Neil. I'm Errol P. Dan. I think your name is Neil. It's Harry and Mrs. Lassiter in the lead. <laughs> All right, there's been another fall. <laughs> Tell you about that later. This is the last hazard in this marathon classic. And here come the leaders now. And another one. They're dropping like flies and wet flies at that. <laughs> this tactic would seem to contravene the rules. The HAC stewards, that's the Auntie Jack Club stewards, might have some questions here. <laughs> Here's the highly fancied couple from the US of A. A very interesting manoeuvre. <laughs> well, let's have a look at that on the instant splashback. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt about these two, they've really thrown themselves right into it. I saw it in rehearsal. Yes, name? Oh, Whipple. Her Mervyn Whipple. Yes, well, it says here, Whipple Act, man of 1,000 faces. Ah, yes, you're quite correct in assuming that, yes. Uh, you see, what I do is I manipulate the muscles of my face with training to represent... Yes, yes, all right, Whipple, begin. Ah, uh, as I said, you manipulate the various muscles of the face. Now, my face has 28 muscles. Yeah. Now, what I do is I manipulate it and I do abstract impressions. I do impressions of highways, floors, abstract impressions, Hollywood movie stars, all done with the muscles of my face. Points are awarded when the audience guess who I am. You're Mervyn Whipple. You're smart, you are, yeah. Yes, but now, uh, the thousand faces, Whipple, where are they? Oh, well, I haven't really got a thousand faces. I've got more like eight or nine, but I call it a thousand because I think it sounds better, don't you? No. Now, no. get on with it, please. All right, no more delays. Here I go. <laughs> 
First trick face act coming up. I will use 12 muscles of the face and I will become before your very eyes a very famous Hollywood movie star whom you've seen in many great films. He's bald. Right, here I go. 12 muscles of the face. Face prepared to become movie star. Who am I? <laughs> Yul Brenner. You've seen my act before, haven't you? No, merely a wild guess. Is that all? Oh, no, no, no. I do a ventriloquist act. Brand new ventriloquism. You've seen nothing like this. Right, all eyes on the hand. Ventriloquism coming up. Hello? Ventriloquist, I saw your lips move from here. No, the voice is thrown from the hand and mine by the lips. What's this? Hello? Fingers never left the hand. They will in a minute, Whipple. Now get on with it. No more ventriloquism coming up. Watch this for ventriloquism. I didn't hear a thing. No, I'm a long-distance ventriloquist. I threw it to Japan. <laughs> What's this one? Panama. Queen's message. <laughs> oh, Whipple, come on. You're joking, Whipple. No, I'm not. I'm Mervyn Whipple. Bong, wrong. Ten points to me. You're wrong. <laughs> no, no, come on. This must be the end of this. I haven't got all day. No, no, it's not. No, the crescendo, the finale of my act. You wait until you see this one. Sound effects. You've never seen sound effects until you've seen this. I call it my omnidirectional sound effects act. All the sound effects are done in the area between the chin and the shoulders. I call it the throat. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, you like that? Good. Well, here I go. I will attempt now to do a very difficult sound effects. Imagine this scene. Very serious now. 90,000 Roman warriors running across a 14th century wrought iron bridge. Now the bridge collapses, they fall 90,000 feet down a steep rocky chasm into a whirring torrent below. All are drowned but one lives. <laughs> Here I go now, throat ready for sound effects. Ready to go. <clears throat> run, 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 snap. Ah, sploosh, will help. <laughs> oh, get out of here. Everything is rosy now. I'm looking at the world, and everything that passes leaves a rosy view somehow. Why do I feel so spry? Ah, don't wink your eye. You needn't guess, cause I'll confess. Someone made me answer yes. In a bungalow, a cover. We'll settle down, I vow. That's why I'm looking at the world through rose-colored glasses. Cause everything is rosy now. You know, some people may cry, but I'll keep smiling. Cause really there's no use to worry or fret. Because whatever troubles may be beguiling. <laughs> 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 because whatever troubles may be beguiling. <laughs> 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 Offended by the blatant filth of that, I'd like you to dial 2074 and lodge a complaint. Oh, it's so degrading. <laughs> 
From a day in the life of Auntie Jack watching her TV show With a faithful two and a friend she knew They heard a plea for help and so She told them that they'd have to go Disguised as the Marvel Mystery Trio So part of the people let the famous continues To save another show The mighty Avengers would be there With Mr. Conduit and his bear They'd save a damsel in distress If they could find the right address They'd be there not there. Look at what is there. <laughs> what do you say? She's got no arms, Max. Oh, arms, arms. I'm sure the makeup department with a little skill. You can't paint <laughs> arms, Max. Okay, so we dub him in. You can only dub in sound, Max. All right, so we dub in the sound of her arms. <laughs> ow, ow. You've had 27 years experience making motion pictures. You're a highly trained man. You're one of the best. You notice things. You've got a good eye the general public. Think of the public. What are they gonna notice? They're gonna notice that she's got no arms, Max. God damn it, Al, will you leave her arms out of it? I don't have to, Max. Somebody already has. Al, Al, look, I beg you, please. Don't let a minor hoidle like this stand in the way of a talented girl's acting career. You mean she can act? Act? Can she act? Stella, baby, show Elsa some acting, honey. Show him pride. <laughs> show him tragedy. <laughs> what do you say, Al? Incredible. <laughs> and so where'd you, where'd you find a broad like this? I found her in a typing pool. <laughs> <laughs> I took one look at her and I said, a doll like you cannot be allowed to waste her talents on a typewriter. So I brought her over to see you, Al. So she can waste her talents on me, huh? No, baby, say so you can give her a part in a film. What do you say? Well, I do have one part, but I don't know if she can do it. She can do it. She can do it. 
Max, the girl in this part has to climb a rope. <laughs> she can do it, she can do it. She has to point muscular control. You should see her playing tennis. Oh, man. Come on, Al, baby. Give her a roll. Now, Max, Max, I don't want to give it a roll. Look, I, I tell you what, Tim. Uh, you come up with an idea and uh, bring it back, and uh, maybe the lady can type out the script for you. I got hey, get those gooks out of there, idea. Indians. Back. I got an idea. You got an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stella, Al, listen to this. Now, here's the picture. Stella here plays the wife of a boxer. Oh. He's making a comeback. Now, it's her support that pushes him on. <laughs> she has enormous strength of character. <laughs> One day, she's down in the gym while he's training. Now, he's punching the punching bag. He's got a good punch. He's got a strong punch. And suddenly, the bag hoists. What a disaster. What the gishmin. No more punching bag. How can he train without a punching bag? How can he get to the title without a punching bag? <laughs> Suddenly, all eyes turn to Stella. She knows what they want. She has tremendous sympathy. And she says, she says in her own inimitable way. I'm sorry, Max. It's no use. Why not, Al? She's a freak. A freak? What do you mean, a freak? She's got a mustache. <laughs> oh, Stella, honey. Don't worry, baby. I'll find out a mustache. Look at the movies he made. Come on, get her out of here, will you? Oh, wait a minute, baby. Wait a minute. She can juggle. Watch this. She can juggle. Look at her. <laughs> <laughs> Tune into the next show, I'm gonna jump through your television sets and rip your bloody arms off. Yes, you will too. And I will too. Yes, you will. Shut up!